should there be child actors? When can you work at a grocery store? Uh, yeah, you can. I started working when I was 11, 12. So, uh, really? Yeah, I started You're caddying in Philly. Well, I right. was in Chicago caddying again. What? But then I in Philly, I started working like 12 hours a day in the summer. Gotcha. And and I was doing it to get out of the house. Maybe I, it's summer gigs. Maybe we allow something. Yeah, maybe we allow summer gigs. Yeah, it just seems like what do you? How can you describe? Do you think that it's it's nature or nurture? Meaning, you don't have a dad. You're hungry for you're hungry hungry like the wolf. <laughs> you're you're uh, you're hungry hippo. Literally, yeah. Uh, I mean, we won't. We'll get into the weight stuff. A Huge. Bit. So big. and uh, and Amanda, all of the even if I, what happens to you on these shows that makes you. It kind of, it's something happened. It just seems like something happens. You know, Mayan Bialik, who was a kid actor yep. on Blossom and, and has gone on to be incredibly successful and impressive. You, Elon Gold used to have a great joke about her. Which? Which was, was he was talking, it was in the 90s. He was like, you know, you hear our pa our grandparents are like, did you hear who died today? You know, Myrna Loy or some old actress. You have no idea. But he's like, you know what's going to be when we're old? They're going to be like, you hear who died? Blossom. Mayim Bialik. <laughs> so, oh, no. So we're bringing the whole thing full circle. Oh, I, um, well, she said something to the extent on a podcast because she has kids. She's like, I wouldn't let my kids be actors or start acting professionally because kids need to be allowed to have a bad day. And you just can't as a kid actor. There's no. How is that explained to you? It It's not. But you understand it? Yeah, there's just no, and it's also, and an, uh, again, I came up in the 90s where it just like was, I, I pray that there's more safeties in place now and more guards than there were for us because this idea was sort of perpetrated of like, don't be, don't make the same true of don't work with kids or animals. Yeah. Of like, they're too much of a headache. They yeah. can't be relied on. And it's shorter hours. It's going to take a hundred takes. And then they got to go to school. And so you, I remember right on Nickelodeon, it, on all that, it was like, it just seemed like you guys were just getting like decamped. Like, all right, now go to the tutor van or not van. <laughs> what, I mean, looking back, maybe it was. Uh, but like the contain the the shipping container, and they'd have like the whatever, like the trailer for the tutors and the teach like school, and right. it just seemed like all right, now go over here, and now go over here. It just seemed like, man, this must be a lot of responsibility for a little kid. It just you you wanted to be the you wanted to be good at what you did, right? And you didn't want that saying to be true about you. You wanted to be like on your mark and know your lines. And You're you have to be like a pick me. Yeah, you wanted to crush it. Yeah. And I don't know if that and look, that's not a new thing for for, you know, young people that want to get A's in school or yeah. crush it on their sports team or whatever. Like I would say that's probably a big part of growing up, but in this specific way, again, it's just like if you're having a normal day as a as a as a young person and you're just not feeling it, there's no version of that cuz then that becomes like an insurance day. Well, as an adult, you can't have a bad day as right. an actor. What's the difference? The difference is th that sh that's too you're much pressure for a kid. Yeah, you're an adult, and you know what you signed up for. What would it feel like? Like when you look back, do you go, "That's it. That was like." But it's also they coping. shouldn't have put. I shouldn't have been in that position. You work in comedy, and I feel like, especially with sitcoms, like sitcom crews are of a very specific type, right? Where it's like a very civilized type mm -hmm. of schedule. And so if something is taking six, seven, eight, nine, ten takes, they kind of look at you like, we're not making a clockwork orange here. Yeah. Like this should be this should be working. And you just feel the energy in the room. Yeah. You know, the air's out. Yeah. Everyone's literally looking at you. Yeah. You're just like, damn it, I wish this was going better. Now at at 37, I go, well, we all know what we signed up for, and we're all gonna get home a little late tonight. And it sucks for me and it sucks for all of us. But it's just one of those scenes that we didn't quite figure out when right. we should have. Well, that's the thing. Like as a if a scene wasn't working on the Amanda show or Drake and Josh and Drake and Jerk and Josh, <laughs> did you 
you internalize you, right that. but would you looking back be like that scene was garbage <laughs> do you know what i mean you just go <laughs> sure. like fucking wasn't gonna work yeah i mean i i certainly think there should have just been so much less pressure because of of the realities of what we were making yeah yeah um and and it should have just been so so much safer so would you rely on who would you rely on to assuage your fear like who would you what would you talk to drake or would it what what would you do for the most part it was just was about, it a lot of like that was all right man it was fine it was right was that good yeah i think there was that and luckily you know it was like baseball in the way of like there's a game tomorrow like you did sort of know that like uh, i'll get another crack at this yeah and and for the most part like usually where sitcoms you're lucky is that what doesn't work on monday it's probably not in the script on wednesday yeah right whereas like if i was doing a half hour um single cam yeah you show up and that that stuff may have never been said out loud by anyone but the writers so just coming out of your mouth it's weird so was it the hard part being the tax on i, I don't want to say like the thing that makes them become drug addicts and emotionally uh, mentally have emotional issues and mental issues hmm. do you think it's the pressure or do you think it's the, like pre-existing I think it's a it's a mix. It's got to be, right? Because what we know about addiction is that you could have two people raised in the same family, pretty yeah. much the same upbringing, and less any sort of specific occurrence to one person out of the other. Other yeah. one person could have addiction and the other doesn't. Yeah. So I think there is some of it that's just sort of default settings. And then I think there are just like certain jobs which are attractive to people that want to be liked and have a deep seated right. need to be validated. And who better than a kid who didn't know his dad? Yeah. Who like just wants to be told like you're all right, like nice swing. Yeah. It's and all you want. Did it fill the hole? Yeah, sure. It was great to feel good at something. Yeah. It wasn't gonna be Little League. I was very overweight. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to him. Um, <laughs> Zoom in on my yeah. eyes. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm with yeah. you. I, I, yeah, I guess I'm just. I've always been interested in like, what is happening? What is this? Even writing for it, I was like, you know, I don't know. Because do the people know that you wrote on the first season of all that? The real ones? No, I wrote yeah, on the second season. Second and, season. Uh, Created yeah, I wrote some the of their season. best characters. Well, and get credit it's, for it. uh, yes, uh, <laughs> kind of. Uh, but what was the hardest part? I think the hardest part was for like for many of us like I I came from I came from nothing and so pretty quickly it became you know your family's financial security is on your shoulders and I think people have illusions of that there are those cases of the kid from two and a half men or whatever or who make absurd amount of money but that wasn't the case then. yeah and i don't belabor it because who cares yeah. but also it was just the reality of like you were making a you know decent salary but nothing crazy yeah you made like a hundred grand a year for mm -hmm. four years which is great but no could you do like conventions and all that stuff and make no, more money there no and there was no like residuals so it just was a, a wonderful middle class yeah. income no issue with that except that once it stops no one would assume someone who makes 100 grand a year can is set for life right for four years yeah you well know? they assume you're making a million right they just if you're on tv you're you make a million dollars sure and that's um, I, I understand people think yeah that. i'm not mad at that so that's the and what was that like for you in particular i think that i really wanted uh, i really wanted to be great at this thing that i i loved so and the music stops the show's over after four years yeah then what where are you? you're in la yeah you're how old uh 19 and what's going what are you gonna what happened what how do you feel and what happens i was lucky that when i was 14 when i i moved to la i had this manager who said you you're a bad actor and i was like copy <laughs> And I was like, bet. Okay. And uh, she's like, you need to go to acting class because you can like kind of be funny. But other than that, you you suck. And I was like, gotcha. And it was like the greatest gift ever that I walked into this class. And the other actors were 14-year-old Evan Rachel Wood, Evan Peters, um, Mae Whitman, Penn Badgley, like all these just like 
killers, right. people who've gone on to be super successful. Yep. And I, the greatest gift ever was I loved it. Yeah. Like I looked forward to Mondays and Thursdays yeah. from six to nine and we it usually go to 10 o'clock at night and we were just like doing scenes and doing like Meisner listening exercises. And that, and I'm reminded of that every time I do it, every time I walk into a black box theater with an acting teacher and I'm there and there's no stakes and it's just me doing the thing, I'm like, remember this. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. I'm, a little, I'm not really used to the green screen.